Welcome to the Holistic Living Podcast, my beautiful friends. You can expect my uncensored, real, and honest thoughts on a wide variety of health topics. If you love to learn on ways to improve your health, your life, your mindset, your emotions, and everything in between in a natural way, you are in the right place, and I am so excited to have you here. Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 11 of the Holistic Living Podcast. Today, we are talking about specialized pro-resolving mediators and the difference between these SPMs and fish oil and how they work with chronic inflammation. This is a topic that is so near and dear to my heart because it's something that I find is like a breakthrough for so many people who have chronic inflammation or autoimmune disease. And if you've been following me for any period of time, that's what I specialize in. Uh, People who have been chronically inflamed, whether it's an auto-inflammatory or a full-blown autoimmune disorder, and I help them achieve remission naturally by working within the immunology, within the cellular level of the body. And this plays into it so heavily. So I'm going to dive in. It's going to be a little bit more technical than my other podcasts, but I hope that you enjoy it nonetheless and really have uh, have a lot to learn and, and get a lot of takeaways from it. It's such an interesting topic and again it's something that a lot of people are not familiar with. The most common thing I see um, is when people have an autoimmune or some kind of chronic inflammation they're almost always on fish oil and while fish oil can be super beneficial it actually has a major downside at certain points and it's really important to understand the difference between SPMs and fish oil and when to take them. And that's what we are going to be diving into today. So recent research has deepened our understanding of the inflammatory response. Historically, it was believed that inflammation resolved itself passively once it quote unquote ran its course. This assumption failed to explain why inflammation can sometimes persist in an unresolved manner. And we now know that an active coordinated sequence of events known as resolution actively executes a return to homeostasis. Homeostasis being that balance within the body, that harmony within the body where everything is functioning optimally and inflammation is low. So in response to an immune stressor, such as pathogens, chronic stress, bad food, etc., neutrophils are mobilized from the bone marrow and they enter um, the site through leaks in the vessel wall. So neutrophils are activated by prostaglandins such as PGE2 and other mediators and this allows them to release cytotoxic free radicals and proteases. Although these substances are necessary at certain times, they can definitely damage surrounding tissue if their release continues over a prolonged period of time, so chronically. Neutrophils help us destroy pathogens, viruses, etc. in an acute setting. However, when they are chronically being released, they create a very toxic system as they continuously release these cytotoxic substances which when continuously released damage our cells, our tissues, and even the beneficial probiotics in our gut. So again, neutrophils are released to certain sites in the body where they're needed, but if they are continuously being released, so chronically, they are going to create a very toxic system, a very inflamed system. And at the same time that this inflammation is being elevated, so is the the tissues in our body, hence the autoimmune process. Our tissues are being destroyed. And at the same time, beneficial probiotics that we want in our body are being destroyed as well. So it's really hard to maintain optimal gut health. Most people don't know that the resolution, which is the lowering of of the inflammatory process, is actually made possible by signaling molecules called specialized pro-resolving mediators, aka SPMs. And that's what we're talking about today. So what are these SPMs? They are a family of about 20 naturally occurring lipid mediators, and they're divided into four classes. The four classes are resolvins, protectins, I never can say this word properly, but mericins and lipoxins. They are generated endogenously from essential fatty acids. Now, these unique signaling molecules will bind to receptors on the surface of the immune and epithelial cells, And they are known as G-protein coupled receptors or GPCRs. 
Stick with me here. I know this is complicated, but we'll tie it all together. Resolution, so that lowering of inflammation, is an active coordinated process that begins when apoptotic, which is the dying, neutrophils release these SPMs. This will halt further neutrophil activity and then initiate a return to homeostasis. So before I continue here, these neutrophils that we talked about earlier that are released and then release these cytotoxic toxins and free radicals into the, into the different parts of the body, that, that's what they do. But when they're done, when they go through apoptosis, which means they're beginning to die, they release SPMs, which are anti-inflammatory. They are inflammatory resolving. And so as these neutrophils die off, the inflammatory process that was initiated by these neutrophils resolves, and then you're back into homeostasis. Now, the problem here is when there's not enough SPM release. And so these apoptotic cells are not getting that signaling to the body. And then the neutrophil release continues and the body continues to stay in an inflamed state. So when macrophages phagocytize the SPM emitting cells, they become resolving cells that clean up the scene and set the stage for repair. SPMs play many other active roles in the restoration of homeostasis. So by activating these receptors, SPMs enlist a complex process that, number one, limits further neutrophil influx into tissue. So this is important to resolve that inflammation. Number two, SPMs will dampen the effect of eicosanoids and cytokines that started this inflammatory process in the beginning. They will also recruit macrophages that will come in and kind of help clean up. I like to think of macrophages like the little Pac-Man, that little yellow guy that goes around and eats up all those little dots on the screen. That's kind of how I picture macrophages. They come in and they clean up, they eat up all the cells and the toxins and things that were in that area. And SPMs help recruit these macrophages to do that job. And then finally, they also will directly support tissue remodeling. So the rebuilding and repairing of tissues, which is important when you have tissue destruction, you need these cells to be repaired and to heal so you can go back to that homeostasis. SPMs support the natural downregulation and containment of that immune activation that would otherwise persist and interfere with tissue integrity and function. So the longer we have that immune activation, the longer we have that elevated inflammation, the tissues in our body are being damaged and destroyed, and so they become weakened and they're not functioning optimally. SPMs help restore those healthy tissues by stopping that inflammatory process. Omega-3 fatty acids, so fish oil, they're precursors of these SPMs, of these pro-resolving mediators. Now, there's some components here. There's 18 HEPE, there's 17 HDHA, and 17 HDHA um, as well, HDHD, which are key intermediates in the formation of SPMs. Many enzymatic steps are involved in the synthesis of SPMs, and some of these steps may be inefficient because of genetic and or metabolic factors. So a lot of people have a very hard time utilizing these essential fatty acids and forming the pro-resolving mediators um, because they're missing steps within the enzymatic process, whether that is to do with nutrient deficiencies, genetics, etc., doesn't necessarily matter at the end of the day. What does matter is the fact that certain people are not converting omega-3 fatty acids into these pro-resolving mediators. And that means that they're not successfully inhibiting inflammation when they are taking fish oil. So moving on about SPM application, I tend to think of the application of SPMs as relating more to intensity of inflammation and especially inflammasome mediated inflammation. There's, um, NLRP3 inflammasome activation, and this is an inhibitor of the conversion of EPA and DHA to the E and D series resolvents. So just to go into this in a little bit more detail, but also explain it a little better. You take a new person who is really up in flames, a person who is super inflamed and their body's just on fire. This is a person, this is someone who I would recommend would take SPMs for a month to start the resolution phase of the inflammatory process, get it going. After that, if their inflammation has calmed down, 
and you've installed enough of uh, what's needed to suppress the inflammasome activation, then they could switch to fish oil and continue with fish oil. And at that point, that fish oil would convert into those uh, SPMs and they could resolve inflammation. For someone who has certain genetic SNPs or certain nutrient deficiencies and cannot convert that EPA into the SPMs, then it's recommended that they stay on SPMs until the inflammation has completely resolved. Separately, a different thought process, if F2 isoprostanes are high, and you can get this test done through your doctor, or if you have high oxidized LDL, so high high cholesterol, you're concerned about oxidative damage to fish oil, which will drive the production of isoprostanes, which are very inflammatory. So if you have high cholesterol, if you have high F2 isoprostanes, and you take a fish oil, the fish oil will actually get oxidated if there is not enough antioxidants in the system. So for that, you typically want to be taking glutathione. You want to like do a high, high dose, pound glutathione into the system. 500 milligrams like three times per day for a couple weeks. Then you could do 500 milligrams twice per day going forward. If a person has an autonomic dysregulation like POTS, which is actually quite common, you want to be making sure that you're taking alpha lipoic acid around 400 milligrams twice per day, but always confirm with your doctor. And this again will ensure you have enough antioxidant status to protect the fish oil. So again, to clarify, SPMs are usually best given at the start, um, you know, in early cases or someone who's just super inflamed or has a major chronic inflammatory condition. Because if you were to just start off immediately with fish oil rather than an SPM, the fish oil would, which should convert to SPMs, won't convert and rather gets oxidized by all the free radicals and inflammation and toxins and it becomes inflammatory as well. It starts to increase the production of isoprostanes, which are very inflammatory. So rather than giving fish oil, I say take an SPM in the beginning. When the inflammation has resolved, try introducing fish oil. If the person then takes fish oil and they're getting inflamed from the fish oil, it's a good sign that it's becoming oxidized or going rancid in the body and so you back up and go take spms again until you can sort out your antioxidant levels with things like glutathione and alpha lipoic acid once you've done that you can come back and try fish oil again fish oil is a lot cheaper than spm so it's nicer to be able to just take that but sometimes spms are needed and like i said spms are often used in early cases involving vigorous inflammation The people that I work with mainly are individuals who are very inflamed, and that's typically where we will do those pro-resolving mediators. EPA and DHA should convert to the SPMs. And like I said earlier, the E-series resolvins from EPA and the D-series resolvins from DHA um, and the neuroprotectins from DHA, these are going to help lower that inflammation in the system. DHA specifically is more targeting of neuronal tissue, so nervous system and brain. This is why people who have memory issues or or, um, brain inflammation could really benefit from DHA because those D-series resolvins are neuroprotectins. They protect the brain. And the EPA is going to help protect inflammation throughout the rest of the body. So it's good to have both. Again, EPA and DHA from fish oil should be converting into SPMs, but for many people who are so inflamed and therefore have a lot of um, free radical production, therefore eating up the antioxidants that they have available in the body, will now take EPA and DHA and it will become inflamed, inflammatory or go rancid because there's not enough antioxidants to protect those fats from oxidizing so in an individual like that who really does not have a lot of antioxidant status hanging around that's where spms are the best um, in that situation so the activity of inflammasomes actually block the conversion of epa and dha into spms so when a person like a client of mine has a lot of auto-inflammatory activity going on they are unsuccessful at converting those EPA and DHA or that fish oil to SPM. And so the fish oil is not helping them. And again, that's where you would take SPM early. It would quiet down the inflammasome activation enough that the conversion can happen. Then again, you can stop the SPMs and start taking EPA and DHA. Um, If neuroinflammation is a big issue, you can take just DHA on its own. But at that point, that's where you can make that switch. I always recommend, um, especially for certain people, that they go ahead and ask their doctor to 
go to get them an F2 isoprostanes level measured through LabCorp. And if the F2 isoprostanes comes back and it's high, I would not take any fish oil until they have lowered it with glutathione. So you take a bunch of glutathione, high levels of it, like I said, 500 milligrams, like three times a day for a couple of weeks. Go back, get your F2 isoprostanes measured again. If it's come down quite a bit, then I say, okay, you can go ahead and do fish oil and it's okay. It's a sign, F2 isoprostane elevation is a sign of oxidative damage to lipids, aka fats, that will turn omega-3s into isoprostanes as well, which are inflammatory. So this is another thing is I, I have a lot of clients and I guys, I know this podcast is so technical and you might just be like, what the heck is she talking about? And I apologize if that's where you're at. I hope I've explained things enough giving you the information without overwhelming you but I'll I'll try to clarify even more I have a lot of clients that come to me and they say I cannot have fat every time I eat fat I am itching or I become inflamed I just cannot handle fat and that's always where my mind goes is f2 isoprostanes if you have high levels of s2 isoprostanes it is telling you that you have a lot of oxidative damage And any fat you consume will oxidize and therefore convert into more of these inflammatory isoprostanes and create more damage and more damage and more damage to the fats that you're consuming and create more inflammation. So with someone who is not tolerating fats well, that's a good sign. And I would say start with doing a lot of glutathione and take SPMs. And if you start to feel better, then you can start taking fish oils down the road. ProResolve Omega is a supplement from Pure Encapsulations um, that I love, and it's what I would typically recommend to my clients. Um, Unfortunately, SPMs are very hard to get in Canada, unfortunately. It's easy to get in the U.S., but for us Canadians, we are kind of, uh, we have the short end of the stick. We definitely can't get them easily. So for someone who can't access these easily, I would say if you're going to do a fish oil, just take high levels of glutathione for a couple weeks before then during the the supplementation of the fish oil as well, just to make sure you have some antioxidants available to prevent the fish oil from turning into isoprostanes. Um, But the ProResolve Omega Omega is designed with a unique blend of marine oils. It's concentrated for specialized ProResolving mediators, EPA, DHA, and DPA, which will help support the natural resolution of the inflammatory process, immune homeostasis, and even cardiovascular health and brain health. So that's my go-to supplement, not sponsored by them, just one that I love. Um, At the end of this though, just to recap, when someone is extremely inflamed, I would suggest starting off with SPMs, which are those standard pro-resolving mediators. And then as inflammation comes down, you can switch to just basic fish oil, that EPA and DHA, which can come from like a cod liver oil. And if you are to take cod liver oil, just make sure you're taking some glutathione as well to prevent the conversion to those inflammatory isoprostanes, which will then trigger more neutrophil production, more damage to tissues, more inflammation, more flaring of the autoimmune process. I know it's so difficult to know what to do and how to do it and when, when you go on social media or YouTube and and people are always telling you, do this and do that. And I know a lot of people promote fish oil when you have autoimmune and yes they're absolutely right to promote fish oil it's amazing and it helps so much but in certain situations if you are inflamed and you've been chronically inflamed for a while there's a good chance you have high f2 isoprostanes really low antioxidant status and so any fats you take will just turn into more of those isoprostanes and cause more inflammation and so that's where it's really important to take a step back and say okay i'm taking fish oil but am i on glutathione if that's appropriate for me or do I have high antioxidant status? Should I be pausing my fish oil? There's so many questions. And if you are feeling overwhelmed or don't know what to do, that's where working with a practitioner can really benefit because they will be able to guide you on what's appropriate for you and for your health. So just wanted to share this podcast. I think it was time to really educate on the difference between SPMs and fish oil and explain when one should be taken over the other. Again, people who are so chronically inflamed, this could really make a huge difference in the case. If you have been taking, you know, a bunch of supplements for a while and not getting results, but are also on fish oil, it could just be by removing the fish oil, you might start to get improvements, maybe add in some, like I said, glutathione and see how that goes. 
always check with your doctor or practitioner before taking any remedies or supplements at any dosage. But I hope you guys learned a lot from this. I hope it was interesting. I hope you got some good takeaways. If you have any questions on anything I talked about today, and I know I went through this information really quick. So if you're feeling kind of lost or confused, or just, again, you have some questions, you can always reach me through my social media and I will answer anything I can. At least I will do my best. Um, And I also have some beautiful guides that will help you get started on your chronic inflammation journey on resolving that inflammation i have beautiful guides that will take you step by step at least for the first couple months Um, they are linked in the description of this podcast it's my seasonal candida and parasite cleanse guide followed by my leaky gut protocol you can get both bundled right now for the price of one so definitely take advantage of that again reach out with any questions i hope you guys have a wonderful day or night wherever you are listening from Thank you so much for tuning in and I will talk to you in my next podcast.